just demonstrating the flexibility of the spine and how the spine interacts with other muscular systems of the body. Uh, and if the spine doesn't move correctly, these other issues, uh, the muscle systems will have to recruit from other areas of the body, which then causes strain or concern to the uh, muscles. And primarily, we're going to be talking about how the muscles of the low back become involved. We're going to show you now the simple aspect of how the, the spine needs to rotate. As I engage the infraspinatus and just hold that infraspinatus and, and concentrically contract it, what you'll notice is the spine starts to rotate. As soon as we stabilize our varicose. So just by engaging that infraspinatus, you can see that the rotation of the spine happens up here. Now if I want to change the spine to rotate down here, all I need to do is engage the supraspinatus muscle and it will create rotation on the lower part of the spine. Okay? So when I talk about the flexibility of the spine, that's the flexibility of the spine. So if we want to change it to the mid thoracic, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the teres minor muscle and we're going to actually engage that muscle. And you'll see, as soon as I engage that muscle, the rotation starts right here in the spine. So the spine has to be flexible and loose in order for the muscles that it needs to recruit to allow the movement to take place. Now, if we wanted to show you another example of this, in order to rotate from the middle part, what you're going to do is you're going to engage the medial aspect of the uh, triceps muscle and I'm going to contract, concentrically contract that muscle. So once again, just by contracting that muscle, the rotation takes place in the spine. If we want to do it on the lower part of the spine, it would be the long head of the tricep and that continues it. And then to do the upper part, we would do the lateral aspect of the tricep and then we have a full rotation of the spine. Now to bring that back, all I would do is change the rotation, the direction of the muscle fibers in the arm, and that changes the movement of the spine. So when I'm talking about how it, it, it interacts, uh, the spine has to interact and be able to move in order for movement to take place. That's what you want to be able to do. Is you want to be able to loosen up these muscles here. Where it would engage in the lower back, if I engage the, the short head of the tri, uh, hamstring muscle, you'll notice that you can see how the, the lower back starts to extend. Because what the body's trying to do is prepare itself to walk. Right? So if we want to shorten that, as we, we can essentially contract that, it brings the body back. That's what I'm talking about when we're looking at lower back problems. We have to look beyond the lower back. Because as you can see, a lot of these muscles would have to move incorrectly to allow that pattern to follow. All right? In many cases, what people try to do is they try to move from the rib cage. So we're going to get Mars to, to, to rotate. I'm going to stabilize your spine so that it can't. But what I want you to watch is, is how the rib cage actually creates a turn. So if we can get you to turn to your left. The spine can't turn, but she's going to. And what Marge can tell you right now is what, what is the rib cage doing? I'm forcing it to move. Okay. So what would be easier to force it? And then when you force it, where do you feel the, the strain? In the back. In the lower back, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is that's where most low back strains come from, is the inability of the spine to be able to flex flexibly and easily move. We're going to show you a demonstration here on the gyrotonic machine that we use and how that we correct it through our fundamental movement therapy. What we're going to do is show you now with our fundamental movement therapy how we work on accessing and strengthening the muscles that we just demonstrated in the first part of the video. Uh, Carrie is uh, our customer service specialist here at the center and she has had lifelong scoliosis 
of the spine, plus she also was a gymnast in her younger days, <laughs> uh, prior to the children. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate on Carrie. What she's going to do first is she's going to show uh, normal arm movement. So from an extended position, as she starts to come back, okay, watch how her arms will, will reach a certain position. Her forearms will reach a certain position, and they'll automatically start to rotate. So what the brain is doing is it's, it's positioning and accessing and recruiting the correct musculature to allow that to happen. And that happens by going through the spine. So when she's in a supinated position with the palms up, it's her lower back that's going to initiate the movement. So as you're going through that, Carrie, that's what you should be feeling is the lower back. And now it should be moving up the spine. And then it goes all the way to the top of the spine. So as we're, as we're accessing both sides of the spine, she's able to go through a normal progression. We're going to have her do one more. And the reason we have the, this, the back on is that we don't want the people to actually pull back with their spine. We want the spine to stay stable. So now what we're going to do is we're going to ask Carrie to rotate her head to the right first. This is going to cue the body and the brain to the direction of rotation. So we'll get you to turn your head to the right and just the right arm will move back. And what you'll notice is that she struggles to get any kind of rotation. So the only part of her spine that is actually rotating is her lower back, which causes the lower back then to be overused, overexerted, uh, and engages the obliques. Now to your left. And once the obliques are overexerted, it's going to create low back pain. So what she ends up doing is completing the movement with her lats. So you'll notice that her hands cannot rotate on only one side. One more time to the right. And you see how the hand stays in the supinated position? It, it won't allow that to, to take place. And we'll have you come back. So only a lumbar. Then that'd be the L5-S1 joint. Uh, the T11, uh, T12, T1 uh, superior aspect would be the rotation right there. And that would be it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to ask Carrie to stand up for a second. And I'm going to do a quick fix, and this is only a quick fix, okay? Um, one of the main problems that we have, and we, we've kind of already fixed this a little bit on Carrie, is her thumb. So the thumb being a complex joint often determines what the back is able to do. It works off of what the back does. So what we're going to do is, if you notice Carrie's thumb, where it comes down, there's an offset in it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the joints of the thumb, the metacarpal carpal joint, the double joint that's right there, and we're just going to hold that. And what Carrie's going to start to notice is she's not going to be able to control this movement. I'm not moving her arm, and I think she's trying to stop me because <laughs> it's freaking her out right now. Um, but what we're doing here is we're aligning the spine. So what, if I keep this up, you'll notice that all of a sudden she starts to get rotation in her arm, okay? And which means is the back is starting to allow it. Now I'm doing this on one side because that was the problem that she had. So it just let your arm relax now. And you'll notice that as she's bringing it back, I'm just going to support it the arm will start its automatic turning. So to further demonstrate this, we're going to have Carrie sit back down. I'm going to hand her these handles. Now we're going to get Carrie to palms up. We're going to get Carrie to turn her head to the right and rotate now, bringing the arm back. You'll notice now that she's able to do that more on her own. So we're getting more of the spine, except the upper portion of the spine didn't want to release. Now we'll get you to the left. Now I didn't do any correction on the left. And notice what happens here. And where do you feel the pain? Up top under my shoulder blade. Okay. So that would be what we would determine then would be the, the uh, access or the problem area with the scoliosis. We would have to do more of a full body correction 
purpose of this demonstration was to show you how the spine needs to be flexible in order to allow freedom of movement throughout the rest of the body. Uh, I hope this helps and we're going to continue on. Uh, what we'll do is in our next video we'll show you after we, we've corrected Carey's scoliosis and, and the difference in the videos. Thank you.